Hey everybody, before the show starts, log on to musicmoneymakeover.com forward slash shop to download all my books and free guides. And while you're there, click on the book a call tab to book a one-on-one -on -one Zoom call with me to get all your music business questions solved. Enjoy the show. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Music Money Makeover Show. My name is Casey Graham and on this episode we're talking about adding the manager now to the team. All right, now after this manager part, there's going to be two other consecutive parts that will come with it. All right, the manager is not going to be an easy section to break down, but we're going to start. I'm going to get the ball rolling on this manager, but we... I don't want to, I don't want you to lose sight of the fact that we still got to go back and continue building our business infrastructure, okay? So, um before we go all the way to part 2 and 3 of this video cuz it's probably going to be in three parts of getting the manager on board on your team, I'm just prefacing you, all right? Um we do have some business to take care of when it comes to building the brand for the artist or you as an artist and also getting your revenue up so you can have this manager in place so we're going to be jumping back and forth here okay now um we are going to go through copyright explain if you want to donate to the channel you can do so over here if you want to skip copyright explain you can do so down below but without further ado here's copyright explained copyright the sole right which an author has in their own original literary compositions the exclusive right of an author to print publish and then their own literary works for their own benefit now, of course, there are two main rights of copy that the music industry operates and revolves around, and that's the masters and the publishing. And the masters is referred to as the sound recording copyright. Sound recordings as in records, masters, phonogram, or the audio recording file, i.e. the wave, mp3, aiff, of the composition and or song. Now, you can collect your master recording royalties or the proceeds due from the sale and streaming of the master recording via your distributor like TuneCore DistroKid, and if you have a major label deal, then it's them, all right? Now, you can also collect the performance royalties via the master sound recording via Sound Exchange and PPL over in the UK. Sound Exchange is based here in America. And if you are outside of America, any other organization that collects these sound recording performance royalties are referred to as neighboring rights. Now, publishing is referred to as a performing arts copyright here in America. Okay, performing arts as in the composition, sheet, music, MIDI files, publishing, or song to be performed. You can collect the performance royalties for the composition via BMI, CSAC, ASCAP here in America and PRS over in the UK. And other countries have their own performing rights organization as well to collect those royalties for you. All right. Now, you can collect the mechanical royalties due from the composition via Harry Fox, Music Reports and the Mechanical Licensing Collective here in America. You can also collect your mechanical royalties over in the UK from MCPS. So now. Lyric Fine right here. You can get your lyric display royalties from Lyric Fine and Music Match, but that's that. Let's go through the six rights of copyright to be exercised to the fullest extent of the United States Code under Title 17, and that's the right to reproduce. The right to reproduce the copyrighted work in copies or phono records, physical or digital format. The right to prepare derivative works. The right to prepare derivative works based upon the copyrighted work. The right to distribute, the right to distribute copies or phono records of the copyrighted work to the public by sale or other transfer of ownership or by rental, lease or lending. And then we have the right to public performance, the right to perform the copyrighted work publicly, the right to public display, the right to display the copyrighted work publicly and the right to digital performance. And that's the right to digital audio transmission performance. All right, everybody, so we're back at it, and we got to jump into uh, some key points of the manager. So I'm going to go into the computer on this episode because I got some heavy stuff to talk about in the slides, and then um, I'll see you on the other side. Let's go. All right, everybody, welcome back to the inside of the computer. These are a few key points that we will be going over throughout this manager series. It's probably going to be a three-part series. This is video one right here. All right, of this how to start a music career, picking the manager, episode one, two, and three. All right, so, but we're going to be going through these key points right here uh, throughout these three videos. So check it out, and then we'll, we'll continue with today's video. Uh, when the job is done properly, a personal manager is the general manager and chief operating officer of your enterprise. Now, this is very ideal. Very ideal, but it's hard to get to. And it's, it's, this is a special situation. When it happens, it's almost a like a 5 or 7% or 2% chance of this 
actually coming together and making an enterprise for you where that operating, that manager becomes the operating officer if they set things up right with the proper experience and the connections and all of that. All right. This does not happen at the entry level often, but it can. All right. Just depends on the business vernacular of that manager. Now, managers typically get uh, from 15 percent to 20 percent of earnings from new artists. That is true. Uh, I'm a 15 percent guy. I like 15 percent. And you will see why further on in this series of videos, why I like 15 percent. But if you're a new artist just getting started out, you're going to get hit with that 20 percent. Or if you're a new artist where you've had some experience, some leverage and some things going on, you're still probably going to get hit with this 20 percent. Getting down to this 15 percent depends on all the other things you have going on and how you need to negotiate the deal. All right. If you have some leverage, you can get down to that 20, uh, 15 percent. If you don't have any leverage, you're going to be right around 20 percent. All right. So now let's go to the next one. If your revenue is high before you bring the manager in, they love you. OK, if it's low and they sign you, you love them more than they love you. Right. Because they're looking like, OK, I like you, kid. You're like, you got you got a lot going for yourself. But I'm going to have to put in some work here. All right. So I, I like your music. I like your movement, but I don't love you yet. You know what I mean? Like and love is, is a big difference. And then there's levels to the love when it comes to uh, having your clients. All right. So now managers don't want to put their sweat into launching your career only to see you waltz off at the first sign of success. And you don't want to be married to a moron who's holding you back. That was a really key statement in the book that I like. But it's true. You know, um, managers don't want to see you waltz off at the first sign of success, especially after they put in so much to get you going. All right. Now, the major things to worry about are publishing and records. The agency is another ball game, all right? So all these people that you're putting into play manage all the operations of your business. But if you can get the manager to help you do all of those and get all of those plates spinning or balls spinning or the ball rolling on all of your operations, then that, that manager can become your COO, your chief operating officer. So publishing and records are the major things to worry about with managers when it's your first time starting out or whether you've been doing this for quite some time because they're going to be pulling percentages from here and you want to make sure that these percentages are fair and they don't take from what you've already accomplished or from the effort you've already put in or from future efforts to where it hinders you from making any revenue on these two options here, okay? Uh, like I said, the agency is another ball game because the agency does something totally different, but they work hand in hand with the manager. All right. If they can't start making money relatively soon, managing you isn't going to be worth their time. That is true. Most managers are looking at you like, yo, I'm going to give you a maximum two year trial period. OK, but really, they have about 12 months before they start. Six months will let them know, I don't know if they might make it to this full 12 months. And if I'm 12 months in and we're still not making no money or we haven't made any leverage or any headway on anything, then I'm gearing myself up to pull in some more clients. So if they can't start making money relatively soon, managing you isn't going to be worth their time. All right. So now let's get into it. Picking the right manager. The absolute best is a powerful, well-connected manager with one or more major clients who is wildly enthusiastic about you and willing to commit the time required for your career. OK, now this is an ideal situation. All right, Mr. Passman, this is very true. This is the absolute, you know, I mean, that's what you want. The manager needs to be well connected for you, but. What does that really say about how much work you're putting in as the artist if the only thing you're doing is creating music? Because in this day and age, the artist can't be the only, I mean, the manager can't be the only one that's connected at this point. And if you're not connected at all as an artist, but you're looking for the manager to start doing that for you, you haven't done enough work yet. You should be decently connected by the time you're looking for the manager. All right. Um, as I always say, you should at least have your lawyer before you get to the manager. I feel and I believe and I think that you should. And I matter of fact, I know that you should. Now, with one or more major clients, OK, who is wildly enthusiastic about you and willing to commit the time required for your career. Now, 
if they have more than two or three clients, you're going to be dealing with a management firm. But with one or two major clients, they have the time to take on a third. They can pay attention to you. Anything more than those three, then you're dealing with a management firm at that point, and you might not get the the full you know, attention that you can from the manager. And by the time you deal with a management firm, they're looking at you as an artist to handle some of the things that you might expect a manager to do when it comes to like your your day to day stuff like, OK, like scheduling, like you're going to have an assistant for that. You're going to have helping hands to help you get content done and your publisher will be there for registration. Like we'll get into it. But there's a lot of other things that the manager won't do. The manager is making sure that the money flows in all of your operations and all the pieces are connected. And a lot of you all are looking for managers to do all of the all the dirty work for you without you actually getting your hands dirty as well. All right. So let's keep going. Now, picking the right manager again, down to earth alternatives, a manager. Let's talk about these four options here. All right. So. One, a manager with a young associate who is genuinely enthusiastic about you, all right? Excuse me, a major manager. This works because if the associate is enthusiastic about you, then the manager will get excited, okay? And the associate will end up doing a lot of work for the manager, but at least somebody is helping out with the passion when it comes to you. Right. It's not the manager doesn't have to have his passion, his or her passion mode, like just on blast all the time. Some of that passion and and energy can come from the associate that will help uh, them get you off the ground. Now, a midsize manager who is wildly enthusiastic about you is great. All right. This is somebody who might have one major client and is looking to possibly bring on a second or build you up to a second. All right. This leaves the door open for a lot of options right here. There's a lot of flexibility and time right here okay and there's also connections in this type of manager three a major powerful manager who is taking you on as a favor to somebody who is very important to him or her all right so um you know i don't like this one right here because if someone does a favor to tell a manager to take you on as a client and you don't bring your a game to the table they won't put in the work for you like you would expect them to because it was a favor, right? But if you can turn this favor into like the, you know, the needle in the haystack, right? That shining diamond that nobody saw coming, you know, like then this will be a very, very powerful situation. But when somebody gives you a recommendation and somebody takes you on as a favor, you got to be very appreciative of that and you got to really work hard so that you make yourself a priority with that manager. Now, number four, a young, inexperienced manager who is willing to kill for you, which is where most of you all will be when it comes to um, getting your first manager. Like, you want to have the enthusiasm of this person on, like, beast mode at that time. You know what I mean? This person has to, like come to your residence and wake you up like like yo you slipping right now let's get to it like they have to be so over the top motivated for you that it's like yo i i I don't even know where this person even finds all the energy to be at all these places at one time for me this is what you're looking for when you're just getting started out all right they're gonna help you with that gritty grudgy like grind really that working on the ground this person will do that for you all right all these other people they're going to expect you to already have or have ran across this person right here or have already done all of that groundwork because otherwise these situations one two and three won't be good for you so most of you all will land right here at number four okay don't go looking for that big manager because they're looking for you to have already done some work okay now Uh, The key thing here is time versus money. The more seasoned manager will have more money and the unseasoned manager will have more time. Okay. When the manager has more money, they don't have time for the games and the BS. They just don't. All right. But the unseasoned manager can entertain the BS because they don't probably won't even see it coming sometimes. All right. And they need to learn from that experience. So they have time for learning the lessons. The more experienced manager does not have time 
to learn the lessons. You know what I mean? Real quick, we got to do an ad break before we jump into the next portion of the show. So I would encourage you all to download all my books and free guides down below. You can contact me, 470-291-5767. You can text me right here on this phone, and um, I will get that text, and we can chop it up back and forth, all right? But if you need to book a call, log on to musicmoneymakeover.com slash book a call and book a Zoom call with me. And then also, don't forget to check out the Music Producers Contract Course on my website, all right? It's gonna go through all the tips and tricks on how to properly and correctly charge for beats so you don't screw yourself, charge too cheap or charge too much and not get the deal at all. And then we go through all the, the points of a producer contract and what you should look for and what you know how one works. And you also get a contract so that you can take it to your attorney to have it tailor fit to your needs or just use it straight out the box. Anyway, back to the show. Now. The Passman Treatise on Treatise, got to say that right, the Passman Treatise on Managers' Careers. All right, number one, the manager is young and enthusiastic and attaches himself or herself to a promising young act. Follow me. Two, by doing whatever it takes, the manager promotes the artist into major stardom, at which point, A, every other uh, manager tries to steal the artist, which is true. This, no, this is the first step. Right here, an artist, you have to be cognizant, meaning you have to be aware that once you start gaining some momentum, that you're going to have other managers come in and say, you know, you know, your manager isn't doing, mu doing much for you now. You can do way more with me. Managers, you have to look out for this. This is that first shark moment right here that they're going to come and try to take your client away from you. An artist, you have to understand that they're luring you with bait. Because it's not always wise to go with a new manager after you've adjusted all this groundwork right here with your old, with your current manager. You have a relationship built. You have connections built together. This starts to say something about you that you really don't care about anybody else but the money and yourself, which makes it now, now your name floats around the business like, yo, this person is just moving around. How they Now that's when people start talking. Now that's when the rumors start. All of this, when you leave the team, the original team that actually did some real work for you, they weren't like, they weren't funny with the money. When you don't have your original people in play anymore, no protection, then now you're open to the industry. Nobody to have your back. Nobody to be there kind of like as a side, uh, you know, like a, uh, like your, like your, your shrink, so to speak. All right. B. The manager is offered 27 other acts to manage. Now, managers, here's your thing. When you start to have success with the one artist that you was, you know, you know, sleeping on a couch with, like pretty much sharing couches in one hotel room all together. When you start doing well and you get offered so many other acts, you got to make sure that you have all of your business practices and your operations, and your people and your departments in place to handle a sec even a second artist. All right? Because you can't let your first artist go like that. Like until it's time to say, "Hey, I think we need to part ways." Because the more acts you pile on top of yourself, you got to have assistance to handle each one. Right? You got to have that. Now, if you don't have any of these processes in place, I mean like an office, the assistant, managers that you will have work under you to help you with these other artists then don't even take a second one on c one of the larger management companies tries to buy all or a part of their company okay now this is this is um if someone starts a management firm from the ground up and what they do is they sell their contracts to the larger management company this i mean this happens but it only happens to a manager that has their business all the way together, all the way set up, all departments running and all engines go for this type of thing to happen for a larger management company to come in and take their client. OK, um, otherwise, it, 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 this one won't show up on a table often. Right now, uh, 
Number three, after a few years, the manager is exhausted from having worked so hard on the first act back when he or she had nothing else to do and could literally live with the artist. So the manager wants to cash in on the fame and fortune while it lasts and accordingly start hiring associates in taking on superstars. All right. Now, um, this happens. Managers get tired, you know. The process to build and, and, and get your tours going and, and deal with all the stuff that comes with dealing with you as an artist, it's, it's a lot. They want to have some relaxed time too. You know what I mean? And I know you do as an artist as well, but that's what you want it to be. This person isn't playing the forefront, but they feel all of that pressure on their back right there. And they want to kind of shift some of that pressure off so they can, you know, get a chance to breathe. Okay. So, you know, you got to think about this too, artists, all right? So if there's some pressure that you can take off of the management's back by maybe making sure that all of your ducks are tighter in a row or in line, do that. Managers, on the flip side, making sure all the ducks are in a row for the artist. That means the business manager, the attorney. Right. The the CPA, all the other people that make, you know, the, the content guys, the video guys, all this other stuff that makes this artist go around. Make sure that that team is solid, so solid that everybody's in sync so you don't have to feel this pressure. But usually most managers won't know that. And this is going to be a lot of trial and error. And so after a few years, this is what they're going to be. Your manager will be feeling like like this. I can't do it. I need some sleep. Until they figure out how to run a successful, smooth operation. Now, uh, managers don't just dump the artist if they're a problem. Like, try to work it out. And if you can't, then, you know, go through with that. But you got to remember, if you're going to take on a superstar as a manager, it's going to be way more pressure that comes with it other than what you're already feeling at this point. Now, this is the point at which many managers begin to lose it because they're too successful. Some of them have such huge egos that they won't take on associates of their own caliber for fear the associate might steal the artist. So they hire less capable people and give the artist lousy service. Others hire good people. Well, let me stop here. Now, if you're a manager and you got to hire, uh, hire on other people to kind of manage the superstars that you're taking in and they aren't down for the team... And that artist wants to leave with them, right? Or they start, you have to give that manager the boot, right? You have to put in your contract that, you know, they can't leave with certain artists if you already have them. Or, um, you know, if they brought the artist in, then whatever. Because this the person that wants to excel and the person that wants to take clients out of the, you know, out of the firm, the management firm, you don't need them around anyway. You might lose a lot of money. But you'll get it back. Eventually, you'll get it back. All right. Now, others hire good people, but pay them so poorly that their employees get frustrated and go out on their own, usually stealing the artist in the process. Payment. Money makes things go round in this in this business. You got to exchange value in transactions here. If you don't do the exchange. Nobody's really going to care about it. All right. Now. As things unravel, or nobody's really going to care about you and what you're trying to get done, you got to pay people fairly. Now, as things unravel, the manager begins to lose artists who are no longer getting their uh, getting the personal attention they once did. So while you have people who are trying to take from you inside the firm, you have to also monitor the other side and make sure that the artists are getting the attention that they need. So you can't be... You know, as a manager, you can't be so uh, focused on your pockets that you don't pay attention to the artists. And you can't be so focused on your pockets that you don't pay people well. And because usually when this happens, when they, you know, you pay people poorly, usually that's when managers want to take the artist. Other management managers at your firm want to take the artist and run. OK, um, so that's that. Now, number five. Uh, after these bad, I, I thought that last one was my last point. After these batterings, the manager decides it was a big mistake to have tried to get so big, breaks up with his or her partners, 
keeps one or two key artists and starts a record label or goes into the movie business. All right. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much the life of a manager right there. If they don't make it to number five and they keep managing, kudos to that manager. So where are we? It's where we are in the process right here. The second step. The lawyer was the first. The manager is the second. All right. So now you can kind of see how this thing will roll, because after going through today's video, uh, after going through today's video, you can see that, you know, uh, when that manager comes in with this contract, speaking to your lawyer, you're going to know that, oh, in order to negotiate all this stuff first, I kind of need to develop an, a, a relationship with an attorney. There is no way that I can do this without that attorney, that lawyer. I need that person before I get here. So here's the trick. Like I, I'm, I'm going to say here and I've said before, if you feel that it's getting hot, like it's not even smoking yet, but it's getting really warm, start, start, you know, you start picking up some steam, look for the attorney. Because the manager is right around the corner. You're going to have so many things coming in. You need someone to help you with it. So when things start heating up, look for the lawyer. When they start smoking, you really need the attorney. Don't wait until things get on fire before you go and look for the lawyer because you might not have maybe saved up some money to invest in an attorney. You might not know who will be the right person for you. You don't have a relationship built. And then people are just like, yo, let me get let me get your money. We got to do this, this, this. And now you have all these expenses built up on things you need to do. Take your time with the lawyer first. But we're at the manager's the second stage. And we're going to keep going through this thing, man. We got a couple more points to hit on the manager in this series. Uh, but this won't be the last video. All right. Now, these are just additional tips from Chapter 2. Consult with your team members before you hire anyone new onto the team. Everybody looks great when they're selling. Don't be loathed by promises that sound unbelievably fantastic. There are no miracle workers. Success comes from intelligent planning and hard work. Shortcuts don't exist. Always ask, what is the fee? Remember, you're hiring people to guide your professional life, not to hang out on the tour bus. If you talk frankly about your problems and they still aren't getting it, make a change. Blind loyalty does no one a favor. You're only obligated to stick with someone as long as they're doing a good job for you. If things aren't being done right and you're sure your complaints were clearly communicated, make a change. Once you've lost confidence in someone, it's almost impossible to continue with them and don't take casual talk at face value. All right, let me hop out of the computer. All right, everybody, so that's been this episode on the show. Like I said, we got two more parts coming to the manager part to this 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 particular topic right here. Um, but we also have to go back and address building the business for the artist. So I don't I didn't want to leave you out because I know some people wanted to get to the lawyer and the manager and all that stuff. But I do want to say that we have to go back and continue building our business if we're starting this music career. So thank you all for joining me on this episode. Uh, and I will see you all later. Peace. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching the show. Log on to musicmoneymakeover.com forward slash shop to download all my books and free guides. And while you're there, click on the book a call tab to get a one on one Zoom call with me to get all your music business questions answered and solved. Thanks for watching.